Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video on Pokemon Sleep. Today we are talking about Eevees and its evolutions. Which one is the best? If you caught a good Eevee, which evolution should you pick? Now I'm going to warn you guys now, this is more of an advanced tutorial slash tips video. It's not like any other that I've done. This really requires you to understand this game. And if you haven't watched pretty much all of my previous videos, I will be referencing some of them. You're welcome to watch it and then watch it again at some point in the future when you understand a bit more about the game. But there's a lot of sort of more advanced things that I'm going to reference in this video. It's not going to be as basic as my other videos. In fact, it's such a complex question the best way to explain which evolution is the best for you is to give you an example, which is what I'm going to do. And thank you for Shadownut for submitting a screenshot of his EV, his or her EV uh, into our Rate Up My Mon chat. And I've had the pleasure of rating and appraising this Pokemon. And very quickly, you can see why it's so important to talk about this EV is that it has one of the best skills in the game, Berry Finding S. Pretty much no Pokemon would find this sub-skill useless. That's my opinion. But the question remains, which evolution should Shadow Nut go for? Now, just to keep the conversation as simple as possible, I'm going to ignore the sub-skills at level 50, 75, and 100. And that's because that these things are so late game that the game might have changed a lot by then. Maybe new Pokemon would have been released. It's really pointless to talk about those right now. And for them to be uh, to be applying, of course, you'd have to be wailing pretty hard in this game right now because getting to level 50 is a lot of candies and a lot of dream shards. Also, level 75 and 100 are not even unlocked yet. We are currently capped at level 50. So let's just focus on level 10 and level 25, and of course, the nature, which is great. Uh, anything that's speed of help one, uh, speed of help up is gonna be great. Energy recovery down, not a big deal. If you've got a healer on the team, or like if you have 100% uh, sleep every night, not a big deal to have energy recovery down. Now with Berry Finding S, this Eevee becomes a dual specialist. It is a times two, um, person berry, so a normal type berry Pokemon, and a skill specialist because that's what EVs are, and all its evolutions are also skill specialists. Now, as you can see, we already have a direction for this EV. We want this EV to be farming berries. Even better if it's a favorite berry for the week, because that berry finding S will also get stacked by having, by having times two because it's a favorite berry. So which evolution would make the most out of Berry Finding S? We're gonna look at the fastest evolution there is. Once again, I'll be referring to uh, one of our resources, cerebi.net. If you look at the base frequency or also known as base speed of Jolteon, it is the fastest Pokemon out of all existing Pokemon right now at the same speed as Raichu and Gengar. Faster speed just means that berries will be farmed quicker. So that would stack well for a berry specialist or a berry finding S uh, sub-skill Pokemon. You could even uh, incorporate this uh, Jolteon in any team just for general farming. It doesn't even have to be a favorite berry because it's so fast. It's, it basically is like favorite berries. It's like double the speed of Sudowoodoo, for example. So every time Sudowoodoo farms one berry, the Jolteon would have farmed four berries. So hypothetically, if I was in Top Hollow, even if Sudowoodoo was a favorite berry type, Jolteon would actually win out. There is a problem. It isn't a berry specialist. It, it only looks like a berry specialist because of berry finding S for this Eevee. And that means Hypothetically, if your Raichu had Berry Finding S, it would be times three Berry. It would be even faster. Even It would farm even more than this Jolteon. So if you had really broken Raichus, which Peaches are fairly common, I find, to, to, to catch. If you had a really broken Raichu, why do you need a Jolteon? There's enough competition. There's, there's good 
other alternative options, making Jolteon not as needed. But don't forget that Jolteon is also a skill specialist, which a Raichu is not, so we have to look at its skill as well. Now, extra helpful skill. I haven't heard many good things about it. I've seen people try, try using it on Growlithe. It seems to be a relatively useless skill. What it does is it times four what a regular Pokemon would have dropped at one frequency. So if you had a uh, this very Finding S Jolty on a team triggering this skill on its own, then it would quickly drop in during that main skill trigger eight Grappa berries, the electric berries, which if you compare to the main skills of the other evolutions seem to be relatively weak it doesn't seem to provide Snorlax as much strength as, for example, Charge Strength M from Espeon. So even though Jolteon has a really high speed, making maximum use of that Berry Finding S is a little bit lacking on the main skill. But then again, this EV focuses on berries and helping speed, not as much in the skill itself, the main skill itself. So it is a reasonable choice. But... Speed of help is not everything. In fact, if you've seen my How Berry Strength is Calculated video, you'll know that Greppa Berries have one of the lowest berry strength provided. Each berry has a different berry strength provided to Snorlax. If you remember this chart, have a look. Uh, Greppa is ranked second last, basically, in terms of berry strength provided. Uh, compared to other berries. So if you look at this chart here, the evolutions that provide the highest per berry strength would be Glaceon and Umbreon, which is the subject of my next point. Glaceon and Umbreon both have 53 base frequency, which is about 15 minutes slower than, than Jolteon. But it makes up for it because each berry feeds more strength. And if you actually level up your Pokemon, it scales even better. So the, the higher the level, uh, the more per berry strength you will get, especially at the stronger berries. So up on this, I won't go through the numbers too much, but up on this side, it scales better as you level up the Pokemon. Up on this side, it scales less. But just roughly, you're gonna get about 10 to 20% improvement by uh, per, per berry strength with Glaceon or Umbreon compared to Jolteon. So if we factor that in against the highest speed of Jolteon, it actually almost works out the same. Not quite. In my rough numbers, Jolteon is still better overall. However, Glaceon and Umbreon, both in my opinion, have better main skills. And if you didn't already know, by keeping your Pokemon at a higher energy throughout the day, they farm quicker. That's another video that I've made. It's called Energy and Frequency. How does it work? So you should go check that out if you don't know what I'm talking about. So Umbreon is able to keep restoring its energy, being a skill specialist, to keep its farming rate up. Which is great because it's also a very specialist because of its sub-skill in this case. Now, if you didn't have Berry Finding S, this would make less sense. Your, your Umbreon is trying to cure itself from fatigue, but it doesn't farm like a specialist. So what's the point? So if you purely had a skill build, so your sub skills at level 10 and 25 were all about skill triggering, um, then it doesn't make sense to run Umbreon. If you have Berry Finding S, it makes good sense to run Umbreon. Glaceon, on the other hand, is also useful. Glaceon will provide seven more ingredients the next time you cook. Of course, uh, these main skills can be leveled up, uh, so these numbers would be a bit, little bit better still from, uh, from evolution, so the actual evolution will provide a level up on the skill. But I'm just comparing the base stat here. Now, expanding the pot is quite useful in mid to late game. An early game, you'll find that you're probably short on ingredients. Generally speaking, this is not as useful. So you may not need this early game. 
But Glaceon was never meant to be early game anyway, because Glaceon and Umbreon, Dark and Ice types, are actually the favourite berry types of Snowdrop Tundra's Snorlax. Again, if you didn't already know, uh, each research area, their Snorlax has its own favourite berries. It's set every week, except for Greengrass Isle. That's another video that I've made. It's called Which Area to Pick. So given that this is a Snowdrop Tundra Pokemon, it wasn't ever going to be an early game Pokemon, so it's fine for you to um, invest as a late game Pokemon. Then, for an Eevee that has Berry Finding S, uh, so times 2 on the Berry, it will also have favourite Berry uh, typing uh, on that week on Snowdrop Tundra, making this evolution worth 4 times a Berry. What's also worth noting is that currently, and this may change, currently Ice and Dark types are not that prevalent. They're, so if we compare ice type, the really the real alternative is Sfeel and Walrein. Uh, you really got to max evol evolve Sfeel. Sfeel is very, very slow. If you max evolve it to Walrein, it has decent speed, comparable speed. The alternative to dark type berries is Houndor and his evolution. The only alternative is if you max evolve a Larvita. Larvita is a rock type berry until it gets to Tyranitar stage. Then it's a dark type berry. So that's a lot of investment just to get the berry typing. And two more alternatives would be Absol or Sableye, but they're quite rare as Pokemon and they take a lot of friendship to, to catch. So I'm, I'm not even considering them at this stage. Making this Umbreon a relatively good choice for Snowdrop Tundra. Uh, if you have Berry Finding S. But in case you didn't already know, there's a third type of favorite berry in Snowdrop Tundra, and that would be normal types. In fact, Eevee is a normal type. So what's funny here is you could just use the Eevee as it is. Yes, there are lots of benefits to evolving. You get a increased the level of the main skill. You get, um, obviously, faster base speed for evolving and higher inventory carry limit. But if you can't make up your mind, just run the Eevee. Just get to Berry Finding S when you get to Snowdrop Tundra, maybe even Helping Speed M, and this Eevee will do just fine. Sure, it's not as fine as Glaceon or Umbreon. Umbreon would be probably the best in this situation. Uh, Glaceon really depends on whether you need to actually expand the pot if you can't decide, just run Eevee. Eevee, its own main skill, is more of an early game type of main skill which gives you more ingredients. When you're not able to fill up the pot, this is quite a good skill to have. And by the way, the only evolution that also has the same main skill is Vaporeon, which also happens to be quite an early game Pokemon. When I first started the game, I thought getting 6 extra ingredients, by the way that would be higher if you have leveled up the main skill, getting 6 extra ingredient is quite a good skill to have because my bag was always empty. I kept emptying out my bag of ingredients. But as I learned to make dishes and how to min-max the use of my ingredients, I find that my bag is now slowly filling up throughout the week. And I don't always dump everything on Sunday. And by the way, that's another video. So how some there are times when you don't want to be cooking on Sunday at all, even though you could dump in extra ingredients. And that's if you can't reach the next tier. And we've talked about this in the other video. So that saves me ingredients. Also, I must say, it's just a, a personal experience from people who are later in the game. I find that they are always maxing out the bag space uh, and not always filling their pot. I find that people who are higher rank than me generally need more pot space. Which means this skill is more of a early game type of, type of skill and the expanding pot space skill is a later game type of skill. But the real problem with Vaporeon, the reason why it's really early game, is that it's a water type. Oran Berry is a water type berry. It's really for Cyan Beach. And Cyan Beach only. For a Berry Finding S, Vaporeon, which I think is an absolute waste to invest in because there are so many good alternatives such as 
Blastoise, so Squirtle line, does the same main skill, but gets a triple evolution and is a bit faster by the time you get to Blastoise. Triple evolution meaning that you get a, you know, you get a free main skill upgrade with each evolution. And then there's Totodile, which is a berry specialist. If you run a berry finding S Totodile, which means times three berry, it renders Vaporeon rather obsolete. In fact, in my research, currently there are the most number of water type Pokemon in this game than there are any other type. So you've got choices. And Cyan Beach also allows favorite berries for flying and, and fairy. And there's, there's also good enough flying and fairy types around. You should more easily be able to set up a team for Cyan Beach than Taupe Hollow or, or Snowdrop Tundra. So the problem isn't that Vaporeon is bad, it's more that it's early game and there's a lot of competitors already for your team space. But if you just started your game and you want to get that Cyan Beach up really quickly, go for Vaporeon. But my personal preference is to have Berry Finding S on the evolution that you need that Berry type for. That would be my preference. Which brings me to the next evolution, Flareon. Flareon is your Taupe Hollow savior. Taupe Hollow runs ground types and rock type berries. Obviously, there's no rock and ground type evolutions. So that leaves fire type favorite berries um, being sort of the meta. Uh, the faster Pokemon are the ones in the fire types, generally speaking, uh, out of the three favorite berry types. Uh, so we're comparing the likes of Pseudo Wudu or Geodude, etc. Some good options for Taupe Hollow would be Charmander and Cyndaquil. Cyndaquil being the, the fire type berry specialist. So this Flareon, if it had Berry Finding S, would give um, Cyndaquil a run for its money. Because Cyndaquil's skill, the main skill is Charge Strength S. So small Charge Strength, which is not that good. Uh, whereas Flareon has a decent increase pot size skill. Again more, again, more of a late game type of thing. But I think it's still a better investment than Cyndaquil. Until the Cyndaquil is evolved to Typhlosion, which has a faster speed even than Flareon. So Flareon has a decent speed. It's faster than Umbreon Glaceon, but not quite as fast as the fastest Jolteon. Typhlosion is faster than this still. So if you haven't got the required resources to get Typhlosion, Flareon is good, a good alternative to add to the team. And you probably don't want to, want to be running five Cyndaquils on the team anyway. You probably want a bit of variety, especially with regards to ingredient drops, because you, you, you would only be getting warming ginger if you only ran Cyndaquil. So having a bit of variety with Flareon in your team and not many other options for Taupe Hollow makes Flareon a good option. So in summary, if you're ready to uh, tackle Taupe Hollow, Flareon, not a bad choice, especially if you don't have anything else for the berry types. Um, if you only had one Cyndaquil, for example, and maybe one Charmander, then a Flareon is going to be adding to the team. Now, at some stage, you're going to be done with Taupe Hollow. You're going to be done farming Taupe Hollow. You obviously, um, this, you know, Berry Finding S, uh, if we choose the evolution based on the area, then it, it's, it, we're limiting that evolution. Uh, or I should say we're limiting this Eevee's potential. There is one Eevee that is good for any situation. And that evolution is Sylveon. Sylveon is basically, basically Wigglytuff, but a little bit better still. The main point here I'm talking about is the ability to heal everyone on the team. So you want this skill, um, preferably taking only one slot, maybe two slots if you really want to have max energy to keep your Pokemon at high energy throughout the day so that they can farm even quicker, the rest of the team to farm even quicker. Sylveon is about five minutes faster at base strength than Wigglytuff. And a lot of people already use Wigglytuff in terms of using it to restore the, the team's energy. The main difference would be Wigglytuff, if you evolve from Iglybuff, would get a level three on the uh, main skill, whereas this Sylveon would be level two only. You could sacrifice a skill seed. Skill seeds are generally pretty rare, but you could sacrifice one to make up for that downfall. 
But otherwise, I would prefer a Sylveon personally. I'd say, I'd, I'd say some people might say Wigglytuff, but for me personally, I would prefer Sylveon over Wigglytuff as my healer. The problem here is we don't want this Eevee to become Sylveon because it isn't a skills Eevee. This Eevee is a farming Eevee. It's got high speed, it's got Berry Finding S. You know, if you look at Berry Finding S, speed, speed. This is not a skill-focused Eevee. We need a skill-focused Eevee to become Sylveon. This Eevee should focus on berry farming. And if you remember, fairy type favorite berry is Cyan Beach, which already has a lot of options for. So this Sylveon, this Eevee is not for Sylveon. We need, we, we should focus a skill-focused, like, skill main skill trigger chance up type of eevee to become sylveon rather than a berry finding s eevee so if i haven't confused you enough this eevee is not sylveon material so what other evolution is more skill focused that would be espion with espion is a generally good main skill and it has a pretty decent Base frequency, so speed. Uh, getting close to Jolteon's level. So Espeon faster than even Flareon by 5 minutes at base frequency. So once again, a Berry Finding S Eevee shouldn't evolve into Espeon because it's more skill focused. Unless we need its Berry typing. Currently, there are no research areas unless you get a good role at Greengrass Isle. There are no research areas that need psychic berries. So it's kind of pointless to evolve into Espeon for berries. You could evolve it for skill. If you have a skill focused uh, Eevee, then you could evolve it into Espeon for that main skill. And of course, don't forget that when you evolve, you plus one on the level of the main skill. And just for reference, at level one charge strength M, it was 880 strength. At level 4, so in this case, because of my level skill level up, and also because I uh, I evolved this pseudo Wudu from Bonsley, it got to level 4. Each time the main skill triggers, it's 2300. So the numbers can really rack up for Charge Strength M. If you play your cards right, Espeon could become a good generalist in any team. So any, any evolution that is... Mm, mm, focused on triggering and leveling up that main skill can be a generalist. So Espeon, Sylveon, you need EVs that stack main skill and they are generalists. They can be used in your team even if it's not favorite berry for the week. But once again, it is not for this EV that is berry finding S. And now there is only one evolution we have not yet talked about and that is Leafeon. And you can argue otherwise, but I think he's the most useless evolution right now. The reason why I say right now is because, first of all, we don't need Durin Berry. It is not a current favorite berry, unless again, if it's Greengrass Isle. But also, I really hate this main skill. This main skill is like Sylveon's main skill, but worse. The number is better. So it restores more of a random Pokemon's energy rather than the whole team. So Sylveon heals the whole team. Leafeon heals 14 energy. Sylveon heals 5 energy. But the problem is it's not uncommon for me to see Pokemon with this main skill heal itself. Which is a big deal because I bring these helper Pokemon along because I want them to heal the team, not itself. If itself wasn't farming the correct berries, so let's say Durin Berry is not my favorite week, if not my favorite berry week, what am I bringing this Leafeon along for? Why is it healing itself? There's a 1 in 5 chance that it would heal itself. So 20% of the time, it isn't even doing its job. And if we simply do the numbers, Sylveon restores 5 energy for 5 Pokemon, that's 25, whereas this one is only 14 on a single random Pokemon. It would be even worse 
if the if it restores the energy on not your best Pokemon. So I'm going to guess that every team has one main really good farmer, and it would be ideal for Leafeon to restore that Pokemon's health. I mean energy, but when it doesn't do that, when it chooses another Pokemon, then you're losing out. And on top of that, amongst the evolutions, it's one of the lower speed ones. It's at the level of Umbreon and Glaceon speed, but Umbreon and Glaceon are, uh, are compensated by higher berry strength. But hey, you know, grass berries, at least they're third highest in strength in the evolution. So if we're comparing dark, ice, and grass, it's the third. It's, it's, it's not horrendous. It's just, it just doesn't make sense to have to evolve into Leafeon pretty much in all situations that I can think of. And there are already plenty of grass type Pokemon to choose from. So it's got plenty of competition. We've got Venusaur, uh, Victory Bells Evolutions. We've got Meganium. So, so that's already nine Pokemon if you include the evolutionaries. Stages. Okay, so in summary, which evolution should this EV evolve into? Let's do the rule of elimination. Let's get rid of the ones we don't like. Leafeon, out the window. Sylveon, not the right build. Espeon, not the right build. Vaporeon, too much competition already. Jolteon, just get a Raichu. And that leaves us with Umbreon, Glaceon, and Flareon. I think I counted that right. Umbreon Glaceon for Snowdrop Tundra and Flareon for Taupe Hollow. If you have a skill special, uh, skill focused Eevee, then you can have a Sylveon or Espeon as a generalist in any team. This is the longest video I've made on Pokemon Sleep so far, and it's incorporated everything we've learned so far about this game. You probably have to watch it a few times to fully understand it. If you if you missed any points, you might need to refer to one of my earlier videos. Go watch that. I've left links to every one of my videos on Pokemon Sleep in the description below. And if this video helped you in any way, please leave a like and subscribe to my channel. By the way, I'll be playing Pokemon Scarlet Violet DLC for the next few weeks. So come join me on Twitch if you haven't already followed me. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk.